Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike for Mobox and we are back with another graphics video tutorial. This time, a ball falling and splattering. Pretty simple, right? Well, yeah, actually it is. So you could use this for blood splatters, you could use it for whatever, but we're just gonna go ahead and jump in and you'll be able to follow along, no problem. So let's go ahead and start by creating a circle shape layer. Go to shapes, drag down to ellipse tool. If you hold shift, it creates a perfect circle. And I wanna just make sure that uh, the anchor point is in the center of the shape. I'm just gonna turn my music down just a tad. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this layer and I wanna center it into the center of the composition using this align tool. If you don't have it, you can go to Windows Align. Put it wherever you want. And uh, I'm just gonna scale this down a tad. It's, it's a little large. And go to three seconds. Uh, that's not important, but <laughs> anyways. So now we're gonna create a rectangle tool. So obviously when something splatters, it kind of splatters out with, you know, like pieces flying out that way, pieces flying out that way, pieces everywhere. So to do that, I'm just gonna, just gonna give myself a little more room. Just gonna create a rectangle. What I wanna do is I wanna take this rectangle and move the anchor point Y on the keyboard to the end and then center that up. Not like that. I want it to be centered like that. So obviously that is too big and you know, only there's only one. So we're just gonna duplicate this a few times. Uh, before I go too far, I'm just gonna rename this bottom layer to circle. So I remember. And now I'm gonna take these, press R on the keyboard and start kind of randomly. I'm using air quotes here, randomly um, placing them around here. It seems like the more random you try to make it, the less random it actually becomes but we'll try to make it look somewhat random. And it kind of looks like that. That looks sort of random, right? Yeah, kind of looks like a guide break dancing. Um, but anyways, uh, now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna rename all these. If you don't have this motion tool that you can get at mountmograph.com, um, link it down in the description. I don't own it, I don't sell it, I don't make any money off of it. But uh, if you have this tool, you could just use this naming button here and name them to arms. If you don't have the tool, you could just right click and change the name. So now that they're all named properly, I'm just gonna kind of scale them in, scale them down, just give myself a little bit more room. I'm actually gonna make this circle a little bit smaller too, to be honest. I think everything is just a little too large for this composition. Um, but uh, we'll make these a little more random later. So now what I wanna do is actually wanna make little blobs on the end. Uh, because when something splatters, you kind of get that little blobbing effect on the end. Create a new circle. Make the center point the center. Again, Y on the keyboard, you could align it. I have this motion tool that allows me to do it even quicker. Um, so I'm just going to keep using this tool. But if you want to know, Y on the keyboard, drag it to the center. Duplicate this layer. And there seems to be a guy being murdered in my alleyway. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm just going to duplicate this and just place these all on the ends of that. So now before I go too far again, I'm just gonna highlight these and rename them to uh, ends, very creative. <laughs> and now we're starting to cook with fire. It's starting to look like a blob, right? I think we're done. Tutorial over, just kidding. So what I'm gonna do, take these arms and I'm gonna press S on the keyboard. We're gonna start setting some keyframes. So I'm gonna make these a little bit more random while we're here. There we go, now the keyframe's set. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come back only 15 frames. So that 20 frames is fine, right? 20 frames is fine, we'll do 20. Make these fat. Bring them in. They don't have to be perfect. Make them fat, bring them in. Make it fat, bring, whoa. Not drag it across the world. Bring it in. So basically, you know, there's more material as it goes in, but as it kind of stretches out, it, it, it you know, the arm gets shrink, shrinks. That's kind of how liquid functions, right? There's less material, so that way the strand, if it's getting longer, it has to get thinner. So I just can't seem to set keyframes <laughs> for this last arm. G on the keyboard. Just 
Going to move that keyframe over. J on the keyboard, snaps to the last keyframes. Oh, crap, that's rotation. I'm going to press U on the keyboard, and that brings up all my keyframes, and I only want scale. So never mind, I'm sorry about that. So you have something that kind of looks like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now change the size of these and the scale and position. See how I'm doing on time? Six minutes. That's pretty slow, but that's the cost. Things take time to make them right. Whoa, that is way too long. I don't know what I'm doing with this one. I just can't seem to function properly. Apologize for my inability to function and do this properly. By the way, this is like the 10th time I've done this because I've had issues every other time with people ch chatting or interrupting or calling or whatever. So selecting all these layers, I wanna now move the center points into the center. Make this a little bit larger. So come over here and start moving uh, these anchor points. This is like, I'm sure, super boring because uh, it is boring and it's all doing the exact same same movements, but I promise it will look cool in the end. Pressing S on the keyboard, creating uh, some scale keyframes. G on the keyboard snaps back to the last frames and I'm gonna set this to zero. Basically what I just did was faked movement, faked positioning um, with scale. So you can see that they're all scaling from the center point and not from their independent center points. All right, so if I click on here, you can see what I'm talking about. Scaling from this, from that center uh, point. All right, so now we're cooking with fire. Select all these, you on the keyboard, closes that down, and now we could start making this actually look like a blob. So I'm just gonna add some uh, motion blur, select all these layers, control shift C, and rename this composition to um, blob. And basically what that does is it takes all those layers and combines them into their own composition. So if I double click, it brings it back up. So from here, I'm just gonna press this button here. Basically what that does is continuously rasterizes and you can now see all of the uh, all of the layers and it, it just keep maintains this uh, effect or this these objects with full resolution perfectly. So uh, now what we're gonna do is now we're going to add roughen edges. So go to effects and presets, search roughen, drag it on. And I've got some settings that, cause I've done this like a hundred times already um, that, I, <laughs> that I feel like work. So you could just kind of pause the video and see if these work for you. Clearly, um, clearly they won't be for everyone. But uh, yeah, so those effects look pretty good. Okay, so now what we wanna do is now we wanna make this, this kind of thing, this fall. All right, so it's gonna hit the ground about right there, right? So we want to kind of set that as being the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of fake this perspective thing. I'm just gonna scale the ball up um, to kind of make it look like the ball is closer when really it's just a larger scaling. So you can see it kind of looks like that. So it looks like the ball is closer to you even though it's not. I can use cameras and stuff like that, but for this tutorial, that's probably good enough. Okay, so jumping back into here, I wanna kind of make these keyframes um, a little bit smoother. So basically, as it splatters, you want it to kind of hit and quickly shoot out, but then slow down because of friction. So I'm gonna use my tool here again, but I'll show you what it looks like in the uh, in the graph editor. So this is kind of what you want your graph to look like. Um, this is a speed graph, and it's speed graph, and you can come in here and, and grab these, but basically you just want it to look like that. So yours might look something like this. You just bring it down like that, but you have to do this for all of them. So these will all be different, but because I use this tool, it makes things a lot faster. So you can see that it, it, it smooths out the keyframes infinitely more. 
So I'm gonna basically do the exact opposite here, right? Because when a ball falls, it accelerates, accelerates, and it hits the ground and then completely stops. So you'll see here, when I go to graph editor for scale, you can see it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, boom, hits the ground. And that's what I want. Let's take a look at this. So clearly there's some animations that are occurring out of, or out of sync. So, want it to hit the ground at about there. Just like that. Now you'll have to move these around to make sure the speed looks right, but it just so happens that I have, have done this in a way that looks pretty good. I think maybe So another thing I want to do is actually when this hits the ground, I want this actual center ball also to scale down in a similar way, but not that much, right? Just maybe a tad. Add the same uh, kind of look to it. So, so there you go. It looks it's basically done at this point. You can be done here if you want. Um, I'm just gonna make it kind of look a little bit different. Uh, layer new solid. So if this is all you wanted to see, you're done. Oh, that looks like the Japanese flag. Let's not do that. <laughs> layer new solid. Let's change this to, I don't know, a dark color. <laughs> One that isn't the Japanese flag. And now I'm just going to create some little arms. So it kind of looks like these little arms are holding on to the ball. Just going to move the center point. So I want it to kind of stay in the center, but I want it to be more over here. So holding shift that allows me to keep this center point on the axis that I want but just drag it this way. Which right there looks good. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Um, not duplicate it, ah, yeah, I'll duplicate it now. Whoa, not save. Control D to duplicate. Um, make sure the motion blur is turned on for them and make one kind of uh, 3D. So now when I hit R, I can now rotate that around and just basically mirror it, set this to 180. So now it looks like this is holding the ball. And these are so white. Let's uh, let's add a fill to it. Effect generate fill. I'm a little bit off white. Sometimes straight to white looks a little crazy. So now what I'm gonna do is press R on the keyboard and set rotation keyframes. But I wanna make sure I'm using the right rotation because again, uh, you know, so, all right, that looks good. And what I want to do is come back here and set these keyframes and right here, expand it like that. So now what you have, add a little bit of motion to this. Now what you have is something that looks like this. Boom, it looks like it dropped. And, you know, depending on where you want these keyframes to be, depends on how it'll look. But overall, you kind of get an idea. I'm just messing around at this point. But basically now you got an idea of what it looks like when it's like how to get that splatter effect. Now, again, because I faked perspective here and it's not there's the position, this is just a flat image. Um, if I want to add any blur, um, it'll take a little bit of, uh, of messing around. But let's say I had, uh, let's say I had maybe a, a backdrop here. like graph paper. 
I can go and search for uh, uh, lens blur. Camera lens blur. And drop this onto the two arms. And then drop it onto the blob. And then drop it onto the graph paper. Again, a camera would do the exact same thing. But basically what I'm gonna do here is just kind of fake. I actually don't want the blob at all to have a cam to have a uh, camera blur because that will be in focus the whole time. What I'm basically gonna do is just now set the blurriness on the graph paper up. It's extremely high. It's, my computer can't even render it. Seems to be having trouble rendering even 20. There you go. Um, so I'm gonna set a keyframe there. Obviously, the end, it's gonna be at zero. But uh, these arms on the other hand are going to have camera blur. So this is gonna start at zero. Start at zero. Come over here, hit J on the keyboard, it bounces back, and now we can increase camera blur to let's say 50 is probably a, whoa, not on that one. I want it to be on these arms, 50, 50, and I'm gonna change actually this to 50 as well on the graph paper. So now let's take a look at what this looks like. The problem is that graph paper is really high resolution and I made it in Illustrator so it sometimes takes some time for it to, to work which I really hope that means, that doesn't mean that this is gonna take ages to render. All right, we might just have to set this to 20 to keep things at a low, uh, low impact. So what I, what I forgot to do is select all these and make sure it has the same movement mechanic as the ball. That way the focus follows the ball. So now I have something that kind of looks like that. Um, again, this last portion, you know, it's not necessary, but it kind of, I don't know, I think it looks cool. So again, you could do that with a camera, but uh, there's a lot of positioning issues that, that you'll run into. I just, it's very simple. But anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. Uh, check out the other videos on this channel and subscribe if you're new. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.